Oscar goes to Alexander Payne, Matt Faxon, Jim Rash, The Descendants. This is the first Academy Award a nomination for Nat Faxon and Jim Rash, who are former members of the Groundlings. Alexander Payne takes home his second Oscar. Day. Who wants to go first? I'll let it go, man. All right, Norman, take it away. So like, what's up guys? All right, um, so my idea for my screenplay for this class is, it's gonna be about this guy, all right? And, and this, this guy is like really successful, but uh, he's living life like a corporate slave, a total zombie. And anyway, one day, uh, the, the suit, he, he, he meets this drifter guy, and the drifter guy is like, so free and, and spiritual. And, and so the main guy, the suit, he's like, I want to be like you. I want to walk like you. Uh, I want to talk like you. I, I want to I French kiss the sun like you. And so... The main guy, he packs up everything that's important to him, and then he, he goes off into the wild to live one with nature. Oh. When you say goes off to be one in nature, what exactly do you mean? Oh, you know, like, he, he, he finds out how much happier he is without all that corporate responsibility. Yeah, so, we're watching this movie, right, about this guy who goes off, say, wandering around in a rainforest for about two hours, right? That makes my life better, how? Well, like, uh, you know, it, 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 like, it shows audiences that money, it, it, it's not important in life. All you need is just like nature, man. Yeah. Hey, and what's that in your front pocket, man? Oh, this is my phone. Yeah. Oh, dude, bro, give it to me. <laughs> Why? Well, because it's a tool of the corporations, of the man. All you need is s some fresh air, water, and sunlight. Give me the phone. Uh, no way, man. Th this thing costs like $500. Ah, oh, money's just a tool of the corporate greed. Give me the phone. There's no way I'm giving you this thing, man. That's what I thought. Sit down, Norman. Nobody wants to hear about a character that you obviously can't relate to, don't understand, and certainly don't believe in. Sit down. Whoa, Next. Next. So I wanted to do a story about a girl who's in high school and it's a gymnast, and she moves to this small town. And 
And at first, the kids are kind of mean to her because she's from a big city and they're threatened by that. So anyway, she joins the school's gymnastics team and if the no. team doesn't... If, if they don't win the nationals or, or the regionals, school's going to have to cut off the gymnastics program because of budget cuts? Well, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, bring it on, except without all the sexy cheerleaders. Well, um, I guess so. A little bit, but there's... Oh, of course, there's a love interest, right? Yeah. Well, he's from the opposite side of the tracks, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's bring it on. No. Yes. Bring It On was a comedy. My movie's more of a drama with more substance. Mm -hmm. Well, Ashley, keep in mind that for most of this country, stupid jokes and skimpy costumes aren't cinematically substantial. Oh, um, okay. But Not a bad idea. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. As mediocre as it is, Ashley, you will most likely be able to sell that in Hollywood. Yeah. No Oscars or anything, sorry, but you'll probably get it made quite easily enough since it's been made already about 600 times this year. Thank you. Next. Present day, crime rates are sky high. Picture a gray and dark, steely type of city. Detective Kevin Monroe. The force's most seasoned cop is a week from retirement. When he's given the most important case of his lifetime, a psychopath is killing people left and right, and he becomes so obsessed with it that it's the only thing he can think of, right? Oh, oh, and then Gwyneth Paltrow's head is cut off and put in a box and FedEx somewhere in the middle of the desert, right? No, no, that's, that's not. Yes, it. yes, that's it. That's completely it. Next. Sit down. Check it. I only do a piece about drugs, mainly ecstasy, because that's what I'd imagine I'd do if I did do drugs. I only do a piece on a guy and a girl that take ecstasy together and how they think it's fun at first and they think they're in control, but ends up ruining their lives. You know, just boom, just drugs. Boom. Game over. Boom. Boom. Why not, um, but hear me out. Why not do a film where the characters are addicted to cocaine or heroin? And coke and heroin have been done. Requiem, fun, blow, all Coke and heroin. Yeah, all good movies. Do you know why no one has ever done a film where the main character is addicted to ecstasy? Um, not really. No? I'll tell you why. Because only a goddamned retard could find themselves addicted to ecstasy. And unless you're writing the sequel to Forrest Gump, we don't have a rooting interest in your characters unless they are a fucking retard. Sit down. John Healy is seeing strange things. Shadows are following him. Objects are being thrown across the room. He's being haunted by a demon. Ghost. I really haven't decided which one yet, but anyways, this demon ghost is killing everybody who's close to him. And if Healy doesn't find out who, what, and why? He may be next. Who is it? Huh? The demon ghost. Who is it? It's actually John. John? Really? Oh, God. You find out a lot in the end. No! Yeah. Not John! Yes. <laughs> Are you mocking you? Yes. Oh. Sit down. A 
Ah, Miss Marsh, our sociology film double major. I thought it would be interesting to write a film about three people who accidentally get locked in a room together by chance. The kicker is they all speak different languages, so we have Three very different people trying to work together in order to find a way out of this room. Yeah, continue. There's a lot of room for comedy in this picture too. I mean, how funny is it watching someone try to explain something to somebody who doesn't speak English? Anyway, eventually all the characters realize how similar we are to one another once we're stripped down to it. Language and cultural barriers aside. The tagline could be, a smile means the same thing in every language. Hmm. Not bad. Not completely 100% sold either. Why not? Well, Miss Marsh, I feel that you're writing this screenplay simply because it is in the realm of your comfort zone. As your professor, I feel you're uh, not stretching your imagination enough. But I feel very passionate yeah, about- I'm, I'm sure you do, Marla, but- But what I'd like to see, what, what I really want from you, is, I don't know, something like a gritty modern western or some indie mumblecore film. You know, something that you wouldn't ordinarily write. I want you to step outside of your comfort zone and see what happens. You might actually surprise yourself. I guess I could do that. Good. I'll give you another week come back and pitch me a different screenplay idea, okay? All right. Okay. Great. I've got a lot of uh, papers to grade and some other professorisms to take care of, so why don't we call it a day at that, and I will see all of you next week.